internationals, of course, later. League action first from the second division here on Sky Sports. It's AFC Bournemouth against Bristol City. They'll kick off in a couple of minutes' time. Uh, quite a few famous players have played here at Bournemouth. John O'Shea of Manchester United, Rio Ferdinand, Jamie Redknapp has been here, Jermaine Defoe, uh, and our guest today, uh, Steve Cottrell, probably better known as a manager now. Just a quick word about this match before they kick off. Would you say that Bristol City would be the favourites today, Steve? I think so. Probably, you know, they've got a stronger squad, and I think that uh, last year's experiences have, will, will probably stand them in good stead. Uh, for another good campaign this year. Uh, Bournemouth must have been um, delighted with the way they finished last season and Bristol City obviously finishing in the playoffs but not getting there. Well, I think they were. I think that, um, you know, Bournemouth had a fantastic end of season at Millennium Stadium. I haven't experienced that myself. I know that it's uh, second to none, really, those experiences. So delighted for them. They've got a good young side here, a good manager in Sean O'Driscoll. I think they're just trying to tie down to a new two-year contract. which he's is, just signed it. I think, um, which is a wise decision. So, um, you know, that's very good for them. And Bristol City, obviously, on the back of last year's, you know, slight disappointment, I'm sure that they'll be up there again this season. And, and they've done very well to re-sign Danny on a new contract. But I think he's done a superb job since he's been there. So as far as you're concerned, then, um, maybe Bristol City slight favourites, but at home, Bournemouth, just as good a chance. I, I probably went for a scoring draw today, but that'll probably be totally wrong now. So um, <laughs> I think it'll be a good football match. I'm pretty sure about that. They both played the game the way it should be, and I think it'll be a, definitely a good game today. What are your ducking skills like? Because they've positioned us in... Uh, a wonderful place, but um, if their shooting boots aren't on today, we're in danger. I was just talking to Sean just before we came out here, and he said that a few of our set pieces could end up up there, so uh, we'll have to have our wits about us. <laughs> OK, let's find out what's going to happen. Here's Alvin Martin and Jim Proudfoot. Thank you, Ian. Well, it's only a few years since AFC Bournemouth were on the brink of extinction. Now they've got a brand-new stadium rebuild on the old Dean Court site, and more importantly, a side worthy of playing in it. Sean O'Driscoll has assembled a team who won last season's playoffs with a brand of eye catching football. But today they face the Bristol City side who developed a reputation of being tough to beat and who consistently improved during Danny Wilson's reign. Their third place finish last season came after two years of narrowly missing out on the playoffs. They want to miss them again this season by securing the automatic promotion that most think is in, within their capabilities. For Bournemouth, on the other hand, this represents a chance to test their progress against one of the best and measure how far they've come over the last 18 months. The Bournemouth side is largely made up of homegrown talent and is very settled. Seven of the starting 11 have only ever represented the Cherries in league football, while one of the others, Steve Fletcher, has been here for 11 years. One absentee today is Warren Feeney, who's on duty with the Northern Ireland under-21 side. That means that Wade Elliott is recalled, along with Neil Young, who makes his first start of the season. Bournemouth 4 4 2 today, and Sean Driscoll wants his teams down to get the ball down and play. Carl Fletcher, especially, likes to start things off from the back there. As you'd expect, a competitive midfield with O'Connor tucking in on their left and Elliot playing as an out and out winger on the right. Up front, Steve Fletcher is probably the best target man in the division. Alongside him, James Hayden, an excellent little player who's intelligent and can finish. Danny Wilson has so far only made one team change all season, but today makes two. City also unable to fill his full strength side because of the international program, meaning that Tom Dock in his place in the midfield goes to Brian Tinian, while Aaron Brown, like Tinian, starts his first game of the season. Brown's eligible again after serving a seven match suspension. That means that Mickey Bell, who scored twice here in the LDV Vance Trophy last season, drops to the bench. Danny Wilson likes to see a strong spine in his teams, and certainly that back four won't give too much away today with uh, Danny Cole and Tony Butler, solid and reliable. Tinian and Burnell will play fairly deep, so Brown and Wiltshire will be expected to get into contact with the front two at every available opportunity. Lee Peacock has had an excellent start to the season, and Christian Roberts has pace and power up alongside him. Well, it's 13 years since Marcus Browning won this division with his hometown club, Bristol Rovers. There's no doubt how much a game against their rivals Bristol City still means to him. Last time he faced City, he was sent off. Lee Peacock scored on his last visit to Bournemouth and is the second division's joint leading marksman so far with six goals in six games. A hat-trick today to take him to 100 goals in his career. Referee today is Trevor Parks. And last time he refereed a game here, he sent off Bournemouth's Neil Young. Bournemouth have only lost twice in the last year here at the Fitness First Stadium. One of those was against Bristol City. Will City make it five victories in their last six visits to Bournemouth and justify their position among the favourites in this division? 
Well, can the Cherries build on their first win of the season last weekend and achieve their first success here since last season's playoffs? Bristol City, in their change kit of all yellow, get the game off and running, digging from left to right. Joe Bernal, their captain for the day. Heinz Carey. Some could make it a little bit difficult. It's the Bournemouth players who are looking into it in this first half. That's neatly done by Browning for O'Connor. Neatly done by O'Connor as well. The referee said it was a legitimate challenge by Wiltshire. Browning wins it back, something that Bournemouth will rely on throughout this game, the ball-winning capabilities of Marcus Browning. Elliot. Start by Bournemouth, and they win a corner. It's a bright start, always nice to get a corner early on in a game. You can see they want to get the ball down and play, but they don't mind playing direct down, or do they, Bournemouth? Play that channel ball, look to get in behind the fullback. Can't roll Hurst forward from the back for this corner, and Lee Peacock is back to mark him. Steve Fletcher, such target man as well, it's pulled deeper for Carl Fletcher, well worked set piece, he's got the bodies in the way, and Christian Roberts eventually wins a throw. Good intervention there by Brown, straight forward here, corner, probably went to sleep a little bit Brown but got himself out of trouble, with a good block. Fletcher. 400 games for Bournemouth now. There would have been so many more if he hadn't had a career beset by injuries. Carey. <laughs> by Broadhurst. No doubt that the likes of Lee Peacock playing for Bristol City, they any difficulty in getting goals, who were the division's leading scorers last season with 79. Another solid defensive base as well. Lee Butcher, one of the rivals over the summer, just running out of room. Difficult job for Luke Wilshire to have to replace Scott Murray. He's a very different kind of player. Midfielder that has possibly less pace than Murray, but more adept at coming inside and gives a little bit more variety to Bristol City's passing game. Certainly got a lot to live up to as well. Great goal scorer, wasn't he, Murray? Maybe expected a few goals from Wilson as well. 27 goals he scored last season from midfield, Scott Murray, and that is obviously the area that Danny Wilson and Bristol City have to try and replace. Responsibility to Wilson coming in on the strike is to playing with a few more this year. Steve Phillips. Free kick to Bournemouth after Carl Broadhurst got a knock to the face. Struggled for injuries last season, Carl Broadhurst. He missed three months with a dislocated shoulder. He's one of the youngsters that's come through the ranks. 100 games for the club and obviously the youth policy is the lifeblood of a club like Bournemouth Alvin. It's certainly going to be important to him today. Took a real whack on the head. He's up with Lee Peacock. See his elbows up. There's no intent there from Lee Peacock. I think it's just unfortunate for the real extent of that elbow. And that is going to be a tough battle today. It's uh, one to win certainly from uh, Bournemouth's point of view. We talked about uh, big Steve Fletcher. Well this lad here. Peacock is certainly a physical presence up front for Bristol City as well. Carl Broadhurst can testify to the fact that he's a physical <laughs> presence up front. Too good looking for a centre half anyway. You should know. Danny Wilson, his fourth season in charge now of Bristol City. He led Barnsley to the Premiership back in 1997. Had a his international career as well. Northern Ireland in the late 80s and early 90s. Certainly, like Sean O'Driscoll, his opposite number, a manager that likes his sides to go and play football the right way. Rob 
first is patched up and seemingly able to continue. First of all, the necessary exit from the pitch before he's way back on. They will restart with Bournemouth's captain, Carl Fletcher. It's Gareth O'Connor. And Neil Young. Christian Roberts takes the throw quickly, and Luke Wilkshire was alive to that, but Broadhurst back on the field. Just sent it a bit short towards Neil Moss, who scuffed his clearance, and Wiltshire has scuffed his shot. Oh, poor play, he's under hit this, has he, Broadhurst? Does all he can the keeper gets a ricochet. Wilshire really should just dink that. Should get a little bit of height on that ball on his weaker left foot. You have to say. And Marcus Browning pushing forward from midfield. Elliot. Aaron Brown to cut out the move. Christian Roberts. He's made his way forward. It's the ball run for Peacock. Tinian, Wiltshire, Roberts gets it in past Cummings, Young did enough to deal with Brown, and he gets the ball away from Bernal, who looks like difficult for Wade Elliott, he sees the free kick in the process, the Bristol City captain. Play from Bernal there. He's a competitor, but as we've seen there with his left foot started a lovely move off down this right hand side for Bristol City. City are yet to win a game away from home this season. They won three of their four home games in all competitions, but just the one point away from home so far, which came at Chesterfield. Go back to March since they last won on their travels. A uh, game at Huddersfield. It's a good home record, just one defeat in the last 21 league games here. Reverse for Bournemouth, incidentally, coming against Lincoln. It was avenged, of course, in the playoff final victory. Millennium Stadium back in May when Bournemouth won by five goals to two to clinch promotion in some style. for Bristol City. Cummings. Purchase. Butler sweeping it away. He was sent off when they earlier this year in the LDV Vans Trophy. Good pressure by Bristol City forcing Bournemouth to win the escape route of Neil Moss. Good ball. Kyle Fletcher behind his namesake Steve. O'Connor trying to bustle through, stopped by Danny Coles. Here's Cummings. Wilkshire. He's going to get the ball onto his left hand side to try and fire it inside the penalty area. O'Connor has given him that opportunity. It's a testing ball. Good defending, there was a push by Steve Fletcher. Got it away. I think Fletcher really wanted to be on the far post. Flagging that ball. That's the option he gives him there, Jim. It's, uh, it's the ball that's played to the far post. And even he can't, he can't get a head run goal. He knocks it down for somebody else to get on the second ball. It's something they're going to have to be aware of, Bristol City. Dealt with it up to this point. who 
who's a member of Bristol City's last promotion winning side back in 1998 with Brian Tinian. Wiltshire now. Seemed to stumble just as he tried to receive that ball. Fletcher getting it away. Wade Elliott. Space for Browning. Challenged by Joe Burnell, something that he does so well. Yeah. So Carey chased by Roberts, but Ward Hurst can shepherd that back to Neil Moss, who's in his second spell with the club. He spent seven years at Southampton, but Played a couple of dozen Premiership games for them in that time. Now back at Bournemouth. Just down the road from here in New Milton. What a local influence in the Bristol City side as well, with four of the starting side, Bristol born and bred. Something that less and less common in sides these days. He's one of them now, Lewis Carey, who was born in Bristol despite being a Scottish under-21 international. That was a push on Carl Fletcher, in the eyes of the referee's assistant by Lee Peacock. Well, uh, got an attacking role to play today, but also a defensive one, I think, Lee Peacock, because uh, Fletcher is certainly the one that will start everything and off really for Bournemouth from that deeper position and if you give him time and space we've already seen it on one occasion he gets the ball up to this big fella on the diagonal and they play from there Bournemouth Hills clear it's picked up it's a good first touch from here held by Hayter out to Elliott that Wade Elliott has really been able to get to the byline for Bournemouth. Well, certainly a good opportunity this. Bad clearance, played back in, a bit lucky. This is a good ball, right weight on it. His first touch just runs away from him. Takes it too wide. And then that angle isn't there to be able to drag it back. Wade Elliott, uh, another player who's come up through the ranks here. They actually paid a token fee to Bashley, who play in the... Martin's Eastern Division. We had a Southampton boy, more than 150 games now for Bournemouth and very much a start of the show last season. Ball by Carey, space for Brian Tinian. Neil Moss saves the first genuine shot of the game. Well, certainly when the ball falls to Tinian, he with 30 yards from goal on his left foot with space in front, and there's only one thing in his mind, and that's to get the shot away. Tried to get a bit of movement on that. It was doing a little bit, and he had to keep his eye on it, Moss. Pushed by Steve Fletcher on Tony Butler. Well, he's got plenty of pace, but... Four and four here was always a little bit too strong. Places here, as far as Bournemouth were concerned, they may have ended Wrexham's club record 18 match unbeaten run last Saturday. But Bournemouth assistant boss Peter Grant was saying that he felt it was the worst performance that Bournemouth had had all season, despite the fact that it recorded their maiden victory of this second division campaign. So it feels that there is room for improvement inside today, showing two personnel changes, has shown a number of positional alterations. Wiltshire. And defending again. Warhurst not able to get it away. The ball play for Wiltshire is offside. And it's a free kick to Bournemouth. Carl Fletcher happy with Wiltshire. He felt that he went down very easily under that challenge. He, of course, was oblivious to the flag being up when he went down. He's done well, Wiltshire's pressured the ball. Comes back here, let's see. Oh, very, very tight. You've got to give him the benefit of the doubt there, the linesman. Made a meal a bit as well when he goes down under the challenge. He's definitely looking for the penalty, wasn't he? Right, 
shows you though, doesn't it, with Wilson, you know, he doesn't give you the pace of money, but he certainly uh, played a nice little ball in on the angle there for Peacock, and then uh, wants to pass the ball and join in with the front two. Carl Fletcher. Angle ball again. Clearance by Steve Phillips. Give him a chance to rectify his kicking. He's done it. O'Connor. Browning. Good play by O'Connor. The end product not quite there for Bournemouth. Nice well play though, wasn't it? You see it's quick feet. Takes the ball beautifully there. Sweep fast one defender. Not really any angle to, to get that ball around the last defender, but couldn't be time to play. Fletcher with more defending to do. He's Peacock off his stride, but not out of possession. This is Aaron Brown now. Yeah. Just clearance. To by Matt Hill. Christian Roberts. Certainly influential, isn't he? Yeah. Just seen a little sign there, though. He used to be a midfielder, likes the ball, possibly wants to overplay at times as well, and perhaps when he should have cleared the ball, trying to bring it down on the edge of the box. Somebody like Lee Peacock, go and let you away with that. He nearly got something out of it, so there's a time to play safe, put it in Rose's head. It's time to get the ball down. He was linked with a couple of big money moves last month before the transfer window shut, neither of which came off. Switch and West Bromwich Abbey in the clubs that were in for Carl Fletcher, though no bid was officially received from either of them. <laughs> Danny Coles. <laughs> Wilkshire, who arrived from Middlesbrough over the summer with the money that got him for Scott Murray. Tinian. Roberts. And Browning. And Warren Cummings. Chance for him to break forward for the first time in the game, really. And he's breaking forward to good effect. Still Cummings. Steve Fletcher. Perches. Go a little bit wider than he would have liked, but still Bournemouth with the momentum and now with a throw. <laughs> Elliot in their second corner, certainly an evenly matched game, isn't it? The first 18 minutes, Nip and Tuck. First corner inside the opening minute of this game, and now have their second. Still Fletcher making a run towards the near post for it. It's pushed by Kyle Fletcher. Bristol City have a free kick. Certainly a lot of variety in the set pieces. Sean O'Driscoll and Dewey Grant working tirelessly on quality of delivery into the ball of the likes of Steve and Kyle Fletcher. Coles intended. Fletcher, Elliot. He's brought into it now. O'Connor. Fletcher was waiting and he had support, but the sorry, flag was up against him. The big man shouldn't be offside there, Jim, looking right the way along the line. He knows that ball's going to be delivered. Just, let's have a look. Well, I think he's level there. I think that's a poor call. 
I was, must admit, I was surprised when that flag went up. Thought it might have been for a foul, but it wasn't. You can see as soon as that ball actually is delivered to him, the midfielders are on the bike, aren't they? They know nine out of ten of them he's going to win. So much more to his game than scoring goals. Steve Fletcher, he's scored 80 for Bournemouth in just over 400 games. Set up more than that, I'm sure, in addition. A player who was signed by Tony Pulis, who of course had a spell as both manager of Bournemouth and Bristol City. It's from Phillips. Young pressurised by Tinian. Good play again. Browning and Elliott combining well. O'Connor. He's coming. Well run back by Burnell. Absence of Tommy Dockerty for Bristol City in the centre of midfield today. There's more responsibility on Joe Burnell's ball winning capabilities. But the possession he won back so well has been squandered very cheaply. Cross Fletcher looking for the flick on. So far, Steve Phillips hasn't really been troubled in that Bristol City goal. No, I think the two uh, centre halves in front have played very well. Coles and Butler, you know, you can see Steve Fletcher uh, lay a ball off there and he wants to get to the far post here and really challenge for that ball. And they've dealt with him very well up to this point. Only well, takes one ball, somebody loses a bit of concentration. Fletcher is able to power one down uh, again on the score sheet himself, but like I say, knock one down for somebody else. So there's still a lot of work to be done, but I think Danny will be more than happy with the two centre-halves to start the game. There's Matt Hill, who was given a nod at left-back ahead of Mickey Bell today. Butler, one of the more experienced players in this Bristol City side. Failed to win any of their opening five league games last season and still ended up finishing fourth in the table. They've won one of their opening five so far. Perhaps a tally of five points out of five games isn't really a true reflection of the start that they've made to life back up in the second division. Just admit, I couldn't see too much wrong with that, Jim. I think there's two players going for the ball. Let's see if I'm right or the referee's right. Not too much in it, is there? I think uh, Roberts was never going to be able to win that ball. He jumped into Swordhurst. Fortune to get that decision. for the delivery from the free kick, which is not short to Tinian. Now Brown, who hasn't seen too much of the ball and this his first start of the season. Good ball by Butler. Carey dragged his shot. And he can get it away. Wiltshire. Burnell. He's never scored a league goal in his career. Carey. Testing ball. Brown was at the back post, but the... Three again saw an infringement in there. And Bournemouth have a free kick. Yeah, a little nudge on the far post, but uh, he certainly hasn't had enough ball down that left hand side. Most of the, what they've done today, Bristol City has been down this right hand side. Aaron Brown, back from a seven match suspension. He was sent off in consecutive games at the end of last season against Cardiff and Chesterfield. And he did come on as a half time substitute last Saturday against Grimsby. Match. Bristol City won almost the last kick of the game. Wilkshire doing well to find Roberts. Something unorthodox from Carl Fletcher to try and get it away. Peacock. And Browning is in there again. Neil 
Young. Steve Fletcher doing what he does best. Here's Gareth O'Connor. Hoisting it forward, looking for Fletcher again. Cleared by Carey. Continuing with a calm touch back to Matt Hill. Tinian. He's expecting Brown to be forward in support for it. He's having the better of it, aren't they, at the moment here. Uh, I think the front players are more effective to this point. I think Fletcher's holding the ball better in there. And the wider areas, certainly they're getting into the more forward areas. The ball's got a stick from Bristol City's point of view. It's definitely, uh, I think Christian Roberts can do better. He didn't make a touch on it, Steve Fletcher, but he's still been guided down towards Cummings. The appeals for handball fall on deaf ears, but it is a corner of Carey. So, for example, they are getting into these areas, you know, and they've got that big target up there. I've seen them give in, I think, not uh, too much more advantage, uh, really, than the corner. They're getting into them areas, like I say, and they're getting a lot more ball into the box than Bristol City. Haters corner. Steve Phillips claims it very comfortably. Another player that's started in non-league football, Steve Phillips. Locally in the Bristol area with Polton Rovers. And was the only ever present in a good season last year for City. Today is 67th consecutive game for the club. Foul by Broadhurst on Roberts, a ankle that the referee is having to keep a close eye on. So, so Jim, he's a, he's a big, strong lad, and I'm a big admirer of his. But uh, some days you see him, and uh, he doesn't use all of that strength in that way to, uh, to its full effect. Wiltshire. Here is Roberts now. He's brought himself a yard of space very cleverly. Stephen Purchase was in the way of the shot. Throw, but just forced Burnell back. So the stealing a few yards. Trevor Parks has just asked Perry to take the throw from roughly the right half of the pitch. Wiltshire. Ball from Burnell. for Lee Peacock, who the Strikers got six goals in six games this season, haven't had the remotest semblance of an opportunity so far out. Now I think yeah, both defences are on top at the moment. Uh, you know, you can see two sets of uh, front men here, more than capable of undoing any defence in this division. Like I say, at the moment, there's two sets of centre-halves playing particularly well. Ball had uh, cleared the touchline before Steve Fletcher's header. Coles, finding Matt Hill, two products of the Bristol City youth team. <laughs> O'Connor, a little bit deeper for the ball this time to try and find some room to instigate something for Bournemouth. Coles back out to O'Connor. Wade Elliott. Steve Fletcher made a run in behind Carey, whose header was vital. Cummings will chase with Peacock. Wiltshire has obstructed him. Been a good little battle, isn't it, down there? The left here for Bournemouth. Cummings and Wiltshire. Both got into the advanced areas. I mean, not to supply that quality cross that both sides need at the moment. Chris Browning, Steve Fletcher. One of the players for for this car, Fletcher there as well. Every yep, Bristol City player back. He's had his own final third, with the exception of Roberts. Delivery from O'Connor, punched out by Phillips. Here's Hayter now. Elliot. Header by Brown. 
ball from Young, it was a poor ball and Bristol City spent their chances of a counter-attack, but Browning has thwarted that. Particularly convinced that the referee should be given the throw to Bristol City there. from Frank Barlow and Danny Wilson on the Bristol City bench. Hill invited forward. Browning always looks to have so much time and ball. You can tell that he's played international football. Perhaps he won for Wales a few years ago now, but he seemed to have a poise. He the fact that he has played at a much higher level. suggestion there, keep it tight, calm down, relax, I think he's quite happy, 31 minutes, no goals, look particularly solid this team. They have been able to keep it pretty tight this season, they've conceded just five goals in the six games that they've played. Hill with the clearance. Cummings, who had a spell in the Scottish Premier League last season with Dundee United. Now O'Connor. Waiting for the run of Neil Young. His clearance just to come off the ball with fullback last. Neil Young, another player who's really looked to be over at one stage. It was a bad injury. He's the older brother of Tottenham's Luke of Charlton's Luke Young. Really good servant to Bournemouth, having been here nearly ten years now. He's got nothing in the way of support because Roberts has stayed down. He's back on his feet now, but Peacock had no options around him. As the challenges start to fly in, it's Brown that is down. Carl Fletcher, who's going to be called over by referee Trevor Parks. Bournemouth, he sent Neil Young off. And the last game between these two sides here saw the game end 10 apiece. It's the first bad challenge of the game. He's rewarded with the first yellow card of the game. It looked like an honest tussle to me. You can see both of them going with it there. I think it maybe handball at one stage. No, he, I think he was going for the ball and then uh, missed the uh, ground coming through. It's just caught his trail now. Now Peacock attacks the set piece. That's the closest that either side have come to a goal. But it's all about delivery. It doesn't get any better than this. Fantastic ball played in. Just a little too high for him. May have got a shout from behind. No, I don't think he did get a shout. He should have got a shout, though, because the big centre-half was in a much better position to go and attack that ball than this man. When you've scored 11 goals in your last 16 games, you can understand the willingness to attack every ball that comes in your general direction inside the penalty area. Here 
Chris Tinian. Oh, that wonderful set piece and a wonderful reverse ball as well for Brown. Options in the center and a brilliant clearance from Broadhurst. Bristol City having their best period of the game now. Joe Bernal. Wiltshire. This time the free kick goes, Carl Fletcher's way. The ironic applause of the home crowd here at Dean Court. Well, didn't he play a vital role to keep it nil-nil? There, Broadus, this is quality play. Delays the ball, lovely little ball inside for Tinian. He gets to the byline, that's an excellent ball across. He read the danger, he's always going to sort it out there, Broadhurst. Positioning is everything. Once into this area, you know this is real danger. Excellent defending by him. Now Browning. Wiltshire did just enough. Clearance by Phillips because the ball did bounce a little bit awkwardly in front of him. And Christian Roberts has a free kick against him and he wants a word with him as well no quite why to be honest Jim why Trevor Parks needs to bring him over and talk to him there I really don't know maybe it's consistent fouling he's, uh, he's got to be right to make a chance for that ball Roberts confirmation that uh, just the one yellow card so far shown to Carl Fletcher Phillips is down injured after Couldn't get that one away Fell awkwardly on his left knee, it seemed. Here's Wade Elliott. And Purchase! Well, he might have picked up a knock, but still got himself in the right position to make the save. We haven't had any penetration up to now. Have they ball and play some good football, but this is a lovely little reverse baseball. Tinian gets beat. He needs to get a touch on it, doesn't he? There's ever so well there. Haters corner and a good header. That will be it from Steve Fletcher straight at Steve Phillips. First real free header that he's won inside the penalty area. Well, you can see the size of the man, Jimmy. Inevitably, he's going to use that strength to knock you out the way, get the odd header down. I think all you can do is just try and put him off, try and not let him get any direction on the header. That was what happened there. He needs a breakthrough. He's had to play very well, hasn't it? Solo Driscoll. Uh, taking the customary position down on the dugout, but he's got a lofty vantage point right at the top of this magnificent new stadium. Christian Roberts. Brown. Hill. 4-4 for Roberts' his cross, and it was left by Broadhurst at the near post, and Purchase puts it behind for a corner. Great ball with his left foot, was in from Roberts. Well, I was saying, come on, this is the sort of delivery I want. Good ball in, decides to take it first time, on his weaker foot. Keeper can't come, defenders don't know what to do with it. Wiltshire with the corner. Football coming up for you over the next few days, of course, here on Sky Sports, including Doncaster Rovers against Hull in the third division from Bellevue. That's Sky Sports 1. It's coming Monday at half past seven. See, whenever the ball goes back to a fullback, they don't just want to lump it down the channel, do they? They'll turn, they play it back to the keeper, they'll be patient, continue to play. It's a beautiful service to be able to do that today as well. Now that the rain's come down, it's made it a faster pitch. Players enjoy it more. Purchase. Challenge on in by Ryan Tinian. Roberts. This will play the pace. Got better of O'Connor. Wardhurst can turn his header. To Neil Moss.
Steve Fletcher flicking it on and Hill caught in two minds. Browning trying to feed the ball into the path of Wade Elliott. Space. Space to try and turn. And it wasn't the shot of a man who scored six goals in six games this season. Certainly got the confidence of somebody that scored six and six, or isn't he? You know, one thing in his mind again, 30 yards out, let's get a shot away. I think if you can keep the ball low as well today, get it skidding off that surface, Jim. That's going to cause the keepers a real problem. We talk about the rain coming down, and it is coming down quite heavily. Having said that, a very Next afternoon here on the south coast, plenty of blue sky around as well. It's a short, sharp shower, which is uh, just greased up the playing surface. That will help in Bournemouth's natural passing game. Wonderful skill by O'Connor to fashion the opportunity to try and play in Wade Elliott and his Wiltshire. And Robert sensed that Cummings was going to get there first. itinerants of the lower division Warren Cummings having been a trainee at Chelsea and had many spells on loan at various places a couple at West Brom and Dundee United <laughs> Tony Butler one of the most experienced men in this uh, Bristol City side he won promotion from this division a few years ago with Gillingham. Here's Marcus Browning. Tinian not sure where the ball ended up. He did end up at his opposite number 11, Wade Elliott. Played by O'Connor, trying to tiptoe his way through. Neil Young, Peacock, and Fletcher has taken the momentum out of the Bristol City counter attack, could be in trouble now, he's already received one yellow card, Carl Fletcher, Neil Young with that challenge, he's done it really really well here, I'll tell you what, when you, uh, you've been booked, Fletcher actually got booked, but you know, you've seen the referee get them out early, them cards. You don't make challenges like that. Plus, you have got a book on that one, Jim. Bristol City will have a corner. Browning's header clearing the bar. Another opportunity for all the likes of Tony Butler to push forward. City have won their two corners in quick succession. the penalty area Only muted appeals really even from the Bristol City players themselves Quickly, the referee has just asked for play to be pulled back. Make sure that Gareth O'Connor is okay. <laughs> it's 
City did uh, very briefly swap the wingers over with uh, Wiltshire playing on the left hand side but at the start of the final minute of this first half they've gone back to their more customary positions good play again by Brown O'Connor Wilshire's got a little frustrated, hasn't he, for, from Bristol City's point of view. Stopped getting the ball, and so Connor really on this side now took well in the Bournemouth, who's uh, starting to get lots of ball in the central area, making a three in there. And it's Wilshire who's being starved. The stipulated one minute of stoppage time at the end of the first half has elapsed. And the two sides go off without a goal between them. And Stephen Purchase that came the closest to breaking the deadlock towards the end of the first half. Purchase seeing his shot, well saved, tipped over the bar. But for all the skill of Purchase here, neither side can buy a goal. Half time, form of nil, Bristol City nil. A nil nil here, and there's the back four when Steve was here at Bournemouth. Haven't uh, moved on much, have they, Steve? No, no, no. I can see they're still uh, still in regiment. We used to have one of the problems with one of the centre halves being out of their line, as you can see there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the football coming up. We digress. International football, a massive day today. I'm sure you're aware of it. Scotland against the Faroe Islands on Sky Sports 1 today from 2 o'clock. Scotland now third in the group, Faroe Islands bottom. But what a scare they gave them in the reverse fixture earlier in the group. And then uh, at 3 o'clock on Sky Sports 2, it's the Republic of Ireland against Russia. That's second against third. Lots of international football. It's league football to start with here on Sky Sports. And it's nil-nil at half-time here at Bournemouth. Uh, Bournemouth against Bristol City, still waiting, of course, for the teams to come out. And we were saying it wasn't a particularly inspiring first half. Now, we were talking during that first half. You, as a striker here, you fully appreciate how these teams are playing. You were saying, as far as Bristol City are concerned, they weren't quite, what was it, the, the front two weren't close enough? Maybe I think that they could play closer together. Christian Roberts tends to drift wide. You know, he's the one with all the pace. He needs to probably play a little bit closer to Lee Peacock. Lee Peacock face up and get the ball in. So then if there's any flick-ons or any little knockdowns, that Christian's a little bit closer to him. But maybe that's how Danny wants him to play today. He's playing wider, he's stopping Warren Cummins coming forward. But then, uh, as, as an option to that, they then can get the ball out to Luke Wiltshire, who's got a, you know, a bit of space to play in. So maybe that's how, how they've set up to play today. OK, well, Steve obviously went for a uh, score draw. Let's see what happens in the second half. Here's Alvin Martin and Jim Proudfoot. Well, thank you, Ian. There hasn't actually been a goalless draw in the last 19 meetings in all competitions between these two sides. That was back in November 1995. And the last nine games have produced 32 goals. So, Alvin, we can but hope for the second half. Well, certainly the full sets of centre-halves carry on the way they did in the first half into the second half. We won't see any goals because I think that's the reason, uh, Jim. I think uh, both uh, target men, Steve Fletcher, and Lee Peacock on either side of it, done all they can, but they need more, as Steve said there, from the partners that they've got alongside them. The foul of Marcus Browning, the former Bristol Rovers man, taking a tumble. Bournemouth have a free kick, an early chance to try and launch it forward for the likes of Steve Fletcher. And Browning himself, they resist the temptation. Browning instead, Neil Young. Is Brown. And he's burst away from Young. Roberts one side of him, Peacock the other. And the idea was right. Roberts couldn't quite time his run to get in a position to get an effort in on Neil Moss's goal. Well, you can see there, he has got pace, hasn't he? And he does ever so well here. Skips around Young in there. Once he's into his stride, you can see Young is never going to get anywhere near him. Does well here, Fletcher holds him up, holds him up. He just needs a little less weight on that, doesn't he? Christian Roberts has uh, just scored the one goal this season. It was the winner against Grimsby last weekend in his first start of the season. Decent spell at the City before the journey at the M5. That brought him to Danny Wilson's attention. He's again in the thick of the action with Broadhurst. It's the Bournemouth defender that 
got the ball that time. Now Marcus Browning. Perches. Punched away by Coles. Carl Fletcher. User of the ball pushing forward from the back as we've seen. Wade Elliott now. Well, the sky's crossed. Nobody in the right place to be able to make the most of that. Something he's done there on too many occasions, though, Jim. I think he's just hoping that somebody's going to go in the end. They're getting, they're getting his head up and delivering it with a uh, real quality. Chance was on for Young after Broadhurst's ball in his general direction. Was able to get it away. Good home record here last season, Bournemouth. They, in fact, only dropped 20 points. The whole of the last season here it was the third best home record in Division Three. The draw so far on their own patch this year, having been held by both Barnsley and Swindon. Steve Fletcher just lost sight of the flight of the ball then. I think he thought Elliot was coming in at the back of him. Jim and uh, he hesitated slightly as soon as he uh, pulled away from it, you see I think he thinks that Elliot's coming in on that side of him as soon as he made that decision the ball was going to be gone neatly done by Broadhurst now Young 350 Bournemouth games now. The City have a very good record here. They've won four of their last five games in this ground in all competitions. Although they've only ever won seven times in Bournemouth, three of those have come in their last five league outings. really been able to cause too many problems at the beginning of this second half that was Hater with the crossfield ball straight out of play Roberts can play as a right winger as well which is an option that Danny Wilson has if he wants to change things around bring on another striker and move Roberts out wide Trying to help it on towards Peacock, but Carl Fletcher there. Browning. Now Young. Purchase. Came the closest to a goal in the first half. Now Cummings. It's a patient build up from Bournemouth at the moment. O'Connor. He's trying to get in behind Carey. And yet be able to do that. Still four inside the penalty area as O'Connor sends it in. Steve Fletcher looking for the header. But the steers it away for the first corner of the second half. Uh, some good football by Bournemouth. Lovely passing. They've got it around the final third. Does ever so well here, doesn't he? Hangs it up. I think he does well here, Butler. Just makes himself a real nuisance for Fletcher. Doesn't let Fletcher climb, climb up above him. Hater with the corner for Bournemouth. Steve Fletcher making the run in. Was flicked away from him by Broadhurst. Placed it back towards Steve Fletcher again. Three round in this time as Bristol City defending numbers. Wilkes will be able to get it away for them. No chance for Roberts at the end of that pass. Ball from Young. That's curved out of play. And Bristol City will have a throw. I think the last passage of play sums up the way it's gone for Bournemouth. They play some lovely football. He's got forward well, hasn't he, today, Young? 
they've got round to the edge of the box and they haven't been able to undo an excellently drilled formation at the back the two center halves we've mentioned on numerous occasions but that man knows that the uh, side couldn't have passed the ball any better jim but it's all about the final third when you get there you've got to hit the opposition here's hater Fletcher looks to Danny Coles with time at the back. He was subject of a transfer bid from Cardiff in the summer. Our former Cardiff man Roberts. Wilkshire back on the right flank now for Bristol City. Burnell. He's only playing with one boot. Just for a moment, Luke Wilkshire. Peacock is offside. Still to his full complement of two boots. The boots of Sean Murray, of uh, Scott Murray, should I say, have certainly been tough ones to fill for Luke Wilkshire so far this season. play towards him in that which Carey did supply Neil Young can get it forward and out again by Coles now Tinian Brown gives chase and Young is just able to shepherd it away good defending by Young that Jim was an excellent ball by Tinian stopped really and Brown should have seen it a little earlier Fortunately for him, Tinian seen the ball, played it. Brown's a little slow getting onto it. Young heeding the cry of man on from the Bournemouth supporters in the crowd. It was Peacock that was pressurising him. Just sense for the first time, there's a little bit of frustration now creeping into Bournemouth's play, can't you? You know, the crowd are getting a little bit impatient. This is better from them, though. Cummings and O'Connor. And Browning back to Warren Cummings again. And here is Gareth O'Connor in a shooting position. Closed down very quickly by Danny Coles. Elliott. Well, Hayter made the run. He saw what was going to happen, just couldn't quite control a driven shot towards the bottom left hand corner. And again, Bristol City can survive. So, as ever so well, Coles out there, sent a half to block that ball. When he cuts inside here, Elliott. Plays it with pace, just stick a toe out and direct that towards goal anywhere but you can. I think he tried to uh, control it, didn't he, Hater? Last season's top scorer. There's got a couple this season already, James Hater. And uh, level on attempts, these two sides, and very level, hard to predict a winner from this position. Ten minutes gone in the second half. An old cliche, first goal is going to be so important in this game, Jim. his clearance picked up by Wiltshire Roberts trying to turn his way through Broadhurst couldn't get it away Burnell now Carey Peacock attacks it home for Brown what a vital touch that was by Broadhurst again it's been immaculate today Delivery from Matt Hill. That was a good ball. Perfect, got caught underneath it. Peacock didn't make the run to attack it. It's the city's turn to have a spell of sustained pressure. Caught 
from Phillips, the offside flag up against Christian Roberts. Bristol there. Uh, now they're starting to show a little bit more adventure, aren't they? Get the ball forward. More direct style. O'Connor. Should be easy for Butler. Danny Wilson does have uh, a few attacking options on the bench, most notably the figure of Lee Miller, who's a striker that they signed from Falkirk in the summer. Part of an attack along with uh, Lee Matthews and Lee Peacock, known as the Lee Amigos. <laughs> there is Roberts, now Brown. Tinian. able to break purchase to Elliot 3-4 for Wade Elliot if he can get the ball in he'll try to prevent him from doing that this done so very well excellent defending that timed his tackle stayed on his feet until the right moment not easy attack out Elliot got a head of speed up against you Lund taking his time about launching this throw. Not a bad cross though. Going towards Purchase. Now Carl Fletcher. Charlie John Hume was from Bernal. Referee well placed. Decided it was fair. Browning. by O'Connor, Steve Fletcher with a header. Comes for handball. Cole's got it away. Peacock did well. Christian Roberts, who's uh, there alongside him at the moment, is uh, clearly struggling. He picked up a knock in Bristol City's last attack. Still hobbling the Bristol City number 18. Is O'Connor. O'Connor again went for goal when he had both Hater and Steve Fletcher in the centre. Absolutely, Jim. Cutback ball was on and he didn't see it. He wait for a quality ball to go in. It's a great run he's made. And look at it, Hater. Cutback ball, give it me. I'll have a touch and then I'll slot it in the back of the net. Gareth O'Connor scored 10 goals from midfield last season. He signed a new a contract in the summer to reject a move to Carlisle to link up with Roddy Collins. Collins has been his manager at Bohemians in Ireland. Hater talking out his frustration at having the ball played to him in a better position earlier on. We've seen an hour's play and still We've only seen one save of note. Well, he's somebody, I'm sure, coming into the game, you would have felt could have got the opening for Bournemouth. Good finisher, has some lovely skills, but really hasn't had enough of the ball, has he? It's Steve Fletcher really being uh, the focal point in everything that's happened for them. He hasn't been able to get in on the second ball. He's been harried out of it, no supply into him. Robert's still trying to run off his knock, and was that handball by Carl Fletcher? Referee says no. Very quick to wave the appeals away. Should this have been a penalty? It's Christian Roberts again with his right foot this time. It's an awkward one to deal with. He goes with his right foot, his wrong foot. It's not intentional, Jim. Not intentional. It's ricocheted off his foot. He also had the sense not to let his goalkeeper touch it just in case he was going to be deemed to be a deliberate back pass. And then by Browning on Coles. 
player that they expect to have a very big future, Danny Coles, just 21 years of age, another Bristol-born player who's come up through the ranks at Ashton Gate. Certainly makes it look easy, doesn't he, the big man? Keeps everything simple, you very rarely see him under pressure. Hill. Tinian. Brown. Trying to bamboozle his way through. A combination of Young and Elliot got it away. Hill knocks it back in. It was Bernal that was arriving. Joe Bonnell has never scored a league goal. This is the 120th league game of his career. He's got a couple of cup goals in his tie. But in the absence of Tommy Doherty today, he's been the player that has been pushing forward from midfield, trying to make those runs to support the attack. More live football coming up for you today, of course, on Sky Sports. At 2 o'clock, it's Scotland against the Faroe Islands. And there's also the Republic of Ireland taking on Russia in their European Championship qualifier that game on Sky Sports 2 from 3. Now Wade Elliott. And Purchase makes a run outside him. Fletcher's in there, so to his hater. And the away was from Butler. Young to Stephen Purchase, just curved into the path of Steve Phillips. That Pelican car Fletcher is going to go out for a corner. This is a very quickly turning defence into attack. It's their first of the second half. Aaron Brown. Well, that as clear a chance as Bristol City have created, and it was Coles making the run forward from the back. Yeah, I think it was Peacock actually climbing over a defender in there. But you can see the difference when they get to the final third. There's more intent, isn't there, on Bristol City's delivery rather than Bournemouth's. And he's one of the rank outsiders with the stadium bookmaker to score the first goal, but he has got a couple already this season, Danny Coles. Good aerial presence at both ends of the pitch. Ball from Cummings. Steve Fletcher being held. Looks like he does a few weights for big man, doesn't he? You've got to let him have the ball, and any good balls knocked up to him in front of him, chest height, you've just got to let him have it because you cannot move him out of the way. He's got to look at trying to deal with the second ball. Bristol City scored seven goals against Bournemouth the last season that these two are in the same division. With the double over them, 4 0 of Ashton Gate and a 3 1 victory here in which Lee Peacock scored. Sure, the way things are going, they settled for just the one at the moment. Free kick taken quickly by Wiltshire. Roberts, who seems to be running with movement, fully restored after that injury he picked up about 10 minutes ago. Here's Burnell. Well, I've lost count of how many times he's delivered ball into the box himself, Roberts. Done ever so well in these wide areas. Scoops him in his left foot. Bunnell has had another good game for Bristol City today. Just can't get the power, can he, to find one of them corners? Christian Roberts, the supplier as well as the finisher. I wonder whether Danny Wilson will be tempted to move him out to that touchline and bring Lee Miller on. I thought he was a little quiet in the first half, I must admit, I was disappointed with Roberts, but certainly in the second half, he's really up there, hasn't he? He's performed a lot better. Wilkshire to take the free kick, and it's an inviting one, which Moss had to come and meet. 
the expense of a corner. Well, not many a goalkeeper that wouldn't have covered that, Jim. It's a brave decision by the keeper. It's one that when you do come, you've got to get it right because it was a quality ball whipped in by Wiltshire. On the still marginally ahead on the corner count. Delivery from Aaron Brown. Get it back from Coles. And then Moss comes to meet it. Claims it at the head of Christian Roberts. for Young and Browning. There's a little chance for the ball display back to him there from O'Connor and Bunnell dived in. He turned around to apologise to the referee. The referee said that's all right because we're giving the free kick the other way. Again, it's one I can't understand from Trevor Fox. <laughs> Marcus Browning sent off the last time he played against Bristol City. He's being told to refrain from such challenges. Step by O'Connor. Extent. Well, that's definitely right. I think uh, certainly looking at Bristol City, Jim, this, uh, this season they're going to be a very difficult team to beat, aren't they? Set the stall out, strong defensively, well organised. Look to maybe play counter attacking football away from home. That's what they're doing now with Luke Wilkshire. Peacock making the running towards the near post. Carl Fletcher got it away. Here's Brian Tinian. The fans will testify he's capable of scoring a goal from midfield. Under the FA Cup for Bristol City a few years ago. Burnell. Wilkshire. Should be easy for Moss. Just to make sure that the wing wasn't going to swing it into his goal. It looked like he even got a touch on that. Sure, uh, took it by surprise. Wasn't exactly where he wanted it to go. Get a touch on this? No, he didn't get a touch on it. Correct decision. Seen the odd goalkeeper caught out by them over the years. Just one clean sheet for Neil Moss so far this season, which came in the victory at Wrexham last Saturday. Really delighted to be back playing first team football after his spell along the coast at Southampton. Last 20 minutes, but City remember scored a last-minute winner last week. So plenty of time for either of these two sides to be able to take their one-point haul and treble it. Neil Young, O'Connor, Warren Cummings. Bit of space to try and get the cross in this time, but. Quality of delivery was poor. Held by Peacock. It's in by Roberts. Final delivery has left a, a little bit to be desired from both sides, particularly from Bournemouth. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Sean Driscoll will think that his team uh, deserves uh, to at least have a goal. He'd be bitterly disappointed with the delivery from these areas. Here's Roberts trying to supply delivery from out wide again. He's done very well, Christian Roberts, and rolls it in. But Wiltshire couldn't get a decent first touch of the ball, and the chance was gone. There isn't a lot more he can do, is there, Christian Roberts? He really has done so well in this second half. And four by Carey. Hurst had to make sure that he didn't get caught underneath the ball. Wrestling now with Christian Roberts, who's fouled him, and that will be a Bournemouth free kick. 
This was the wonderful skill by Christian Roberts, which set up the opportunity for Lee Wiltshire, who's st still yet to score a goal for Bristol City. You see Wiltshire just panics at the vital moment there. You know, he can maybe let that run across him and then get a shot away with his left foot. Tries to take it on with his right foot. Doesn't get it right in the air. He lets Bournemouth off the hook there. This time awarded in favour of Burnell. Peacock still eager for the ball to be played into the right area, still confident that he will be able to supply the decisive touch. Puts it on now towards Roberts. The result of all of that is another corner. He's been good today. If he hasn't won the first header, Fletcher's gone up for the first and lost it. He's always been around to sweep up any bits and pieces. Variation this time from Brown. Five forward for him. All he could find was Neil Moss. There for the taking for them, you know, Jim. Just to see if they over it a little bit now. Crowd's getting a little frustrated. You're going to set up with a point if you want to get up automatically this season. That's the difference. Look for all three. Another good intervention by Broadhurst. Carey's throw. There's Bernal. Burnell's in there, but can only steer it to Elliott. Back to James Hayter. Steve Fletcher made the run ahead of him. Brown eventually has to come back to defend on the edge of his own penalty area, the winger. That's a nice challenge from O'Connor. Goes for goal. A bit of swerve on it from Wade Elliott, but like so many efforts before it, just not able to hit the target. Yeah, I must admit, I think uh, in this wider area, I think Hill has had the better of him today. He's uh, gone into that central lane for once. He's turned with the ball, got 10 yards of space to turn. He didn't come into contact with him, the two centre halves, so he's got the shot away. But uh, it doesn't surprise me that Sean Driscoll's making a change. Bristol City up to that point that we're on top. Look at the more likely to get the boot through. Danny Thomas, the former Leicester trainee, is the player that is coming on. He's a, a left winger. And that's going to necessitate uh, a slight tinkering around with the midfield. Steve Purchase is going to drop back to left back. Here's Thomas trying to get involved in the action straight away. central midfield there, well, he started to creep in there anyway, Jim, and uh, did pretty good in there, I must say, he's passed the ball exceptionally well. I think he's got the uh, the penetration that maybe uh, from that area that they've lacked today, Bob. Roberts was flagged offside. Well, that's another well, that's level. One. That's level, there's no daylight there. He's tried to come out. And that left-hand side centre-half should not be playing that. It's up to Broadhurst to play it. by Gary Ives, the referee's assistant. Perhaps will be very grateful that the flag did come up because he had more time than he thought. Ball from Coles. Oh. 
Brown. Now Hill. Winning more bodies forward to every attack now. Referee allows play to continue. Brown. Hill. Oh dear. You won't want to see that one again, Jim. Did ever so well to get into the position. And he had so much time and space. Makes the ball, played back in. He can have a touch, he can do whatever he wants. That reminds me of me in that sort of situation because he didn't really do one or the other in the end, did he? It was the finish of a man who scored four goals in 171 senior games. He has come into the game a lot more on the left-hand side for Bristol, hasn't he? Bristol City, you know, he's a... And what he has got in there, like I say, that's the difference between the two sides up to this point. I think the delivery has got more intent on it from Bristol City's point of view. There he is again. Tinian. Carey. in the final 10 minutes will either of these sides be able to get that breakthrough <laughs> the side of the day just one point above Stockport who uh, third bottom in the table hasn't always been matched by the result and on the back foot again here is Hill delivers a good ball and that was close again it was Peacock the target man who was on the end of it much better delivery this time from Bristol City but again Bournemouth survive quality quality ball invite wasn't it but again Fletcher just does enough I think to stop Peacock getting a free header at that he has to really work hard only whiskers away wasn't it from the big man Sooner or later, you'll feel that the side is going to get the goal. They're getting into great positions. He's young. Elliot. substitute Connor equally at home in that more central midfield role Carl Fletcher we try and bring Thomas in he's done very well to beat Carey in the air <laughs> Purchase oh, a little bit too much time to get it away Coles eventually can Clear his lines. Hill. I think Danny Wilson will be pleased with many aspects of Bristol City's performance today. He likes to have a solid backbone. Strong defensive unit, cover for them in the midfield, and then trying to get the other four attack minded players in the side to create the chances. That has been the game plan that we've seen, no doubt about it. Most definitely, and I think as the game's gone on, they've looked stronger and stronger, haven't they, Jim? You know, they've come out the shell a little, they've started to look to get into the, uh, the final third a lot more. I think the two fullbacks have got much more involved in the last 20 minutes than they did in the first half, you know, so uh, I think a lot of positives for them. Still nil nil, anyone's game. Is it going to be the first goal to score between these two sides in 20 meetings? Fletcher's header. Young. O'Connor. Oh, 
purchase. slowly towards the edge of that Bristol City penalty area, here's Elliot. An attempt at control from Hayter, Browning, Thomas, Steve Fletcher still forward. It's launched in towards him! It's the chance that he's been waiting for, but he couldn't take it. And it looked like he'd done everything right, didn't it? Good play from Bournemouth. The invite ball comes in, he's in between Butler and Hill, looks like he's done everything right. If he had been right, Phillips wouldn't have got anywhere near it. Frustration on his face. Three defenders around him. Steve Fletcher still managing to get the attempt on goal, which was Bournemouth's tenth of the game. Largely less than half have been on target for either side. this attack quickly, Young. Variation this time, much more direct ball forward. Cole's possibly got a little bit lucky, it seems as though the ball hit his head rather than it being a deliberate attempt to steer it back to Steve Phillips. Certainly saw the danger quickly, didn't he, Steve Phillips? Sorted it out. What's Brian Tinney in there, Jim? Plays with the cigar up, doesn't he? Just gets it, gives it, knows where everybody is, plays a lot of one and two touch football. Doesn't uh, expend any energy that he doesn't have to. Just keeps possession for him at vital times. And there is in the thick of the action set to place 400th league game for City next week. 500 for the club in all competitions, Brian Tinian. Bristol City, the 35-year-old, their longest-serving player. Young backs off, but got his body in the way of the shot. Elliot can complete the clearance. They certainly are looking a good side now, Bristol City. You know, we've seen that they've got much more ambition to their play, but they're squeezing the ball, they're not letting the ball that starts off any attack from deep. Fresh the ball high up the pitch. Look at them, particularly good units. Here is the change, it's a striker for a striker, Christian Roberts coming off, he hasn't played a full 90 minutes all season, except for last weekend against Grimsby. And comes Lee Miller, who was £300,000 signing from Falkirk in the summer with a very good goal-scoring reputation from the Scottish First Division. 17 goals last season as Falkirk won that league. With a little over four minutes to try and make his mark. Lee Miller, the hero for Bristol City. Coles. Launched forward towards Miller straight away. Now Brown. Going to need better delivery than that. If they're going to break through in the final stages of this game. Extend their 
winless streak away from home to seven matches, but have only lost two of their last 15 league games coming into this game. Are you surprised that they have gone seven without a win away from home? Yeah, when you see a performance like this, because you can't see them giving too much away, and they're with Peacock up front, and they're Miller and Roberts. You know, you feel they've got goals. We've seen in the second half, especially, Jim, that uh, they've got certainly delivery from the wider area, so still early days yet, and I think uh, a few players take maybe six, seven games to get into the season to get really sharp, so form an understanding you know, with each other, players around them. But I'm sure that other people in this division will look at this performance from Bristol City and realise that they are going to be one of the front runners, certainly one of the teams to stay on the tails of. Steve Fletcher, Browning. He would have loved to be the match winner for the Bristol Rovers man. Miller gives it away. That proved to be a costly error. The crowd lifted again. Hater. That could well be the first Bristol City yellow card of the game. It was Matt Hill that stopped him. Easy decision for Trevor Parks. Yeah, definitely. He's not quick, but he's certainly a box of tricks. You can see. Hill. Matt Hill joins Carl Fletcher in the book, the only two portions that we've seen so far. Into the last minute, will there be a last minute winner again? It's Marcus Browning, it's not the player that Bournemouth would have wanted on the end of that, but sent the header towards goal. Yeah, they wanted Fletcher on that far post, Jim. That would have been a, a real threat. Uh, I'd be very surprised if he hadn't been able to power that back down into the net. City want to make another change. It's Mickey Bell that's going to be coming on. Brown will come off. Bell scored uh, a couple of goals in the LDV here last season and also scored in the last league game between these two sides here. A little bit of shoring up of that left-hand side. Bella, more defensive-minded player on that left flank. Aim into two extra minutes of stoppage time. Here's Danny Thomas. Young. Chased by Steve Fletcher, but Coles marshalled him superbly. Well, he's frustrated, isn't he? Because uh, Cole knew exactly what he's doing. He's got an old head on, on young shoulders there. And that back header, which Miller will chase. Came off Carl Fletcher, and Bristol City will have a corner deep in the stoppage time. Couldn't get away with that. He read it again, didn't he, Peacock? Can't afford to make a mistake around some of the experience. through those two minutes of time handed on at the end of this game. Steve Fletcher with the header clear, and a miss kick, Bell drives it back in. Very almost to see by Thomas, Bournemouth will try and get it forward quickly on the counter-attack. Thomas has won it back but couldn't find a teammate. Is there going to be a late sting in the tail as Peacock tries to get in there? And it's another corner for Bristol City right at the end of this game. He got stronger and stronger. You know, Broadhurst again. 
dealing with things there when they were under real pressure. Surely the last chance for Bristol City to get the winner. Here's Bell. There's the touch of a man who's just come on. I think he was in between having a shot and then pulling it back across goal and in the end didn't do one or the other, but that was a good opportunity. So still no away win this season for Bristol City and no home win this season for Bournemouth. Despite the best attempts of prolific striker Lee Peacock and target man Steve Fletcher. These two sides having their first goalless draw against each other in 20 games. Well, there wasn't too much in it. I think uh, both managers would be more than delighted with the uh, contribution of their players. I think away from home, especially, I think uh, Danny Wilson will be pleased with his performance. A good point here. Won't be easy for any team to come here. And they got stronger and stronger as the game went on. Started to play more and more football, but they aren't going to give anything away, Jim, are they? Particularly solid unit all the way through that team. I believe they are the prospects for this season, at least. Well, from what I've seen in the division so far, this is a team. It isn't, like I say, it's got consistency written all over it, Jim. You end up above them, you're going to go up as far as I'm concerned. No goals, a few chances, but finishing not quite there when it was there. The goalkeepers were good enough to deny the likes of Steve Purchase a winning goal. Neither side will be particularly dispirited. It's finished Bournemouth nil, Bristol City nil.